So, wonderful, warm Mayfair welcome to Titus. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, what I'd like to do to start, if I may, is to ask you about you and your background, how you got here, and then your relationship with this amazing sporting wine club sure. and the brand. So, thank Take you. Take it away. Thanks very much for having me on. It's, no it's quite exciting. Um, there's a lot to talk about with Sporting Wine Club. I, on a, on a personal level, I've worked in the wine industry for about six years, oh, wow. uh, all in retail. And uh, the, the founder of the Sporting Wine Club, Simon Halliday, um, pitched this idea, this concept to me of a, a sporting wine club that he'd been running for two or three years. And uh, I think, you know, at the time, it sort of like sounded to me like the idea you come up with, the bright idea at 4 a.m. with your mates. It's like, what's the best <laughs> thing you could do? A, a, a wine club that's to do with sport. And the, the, I guess the, the whole concept uh, or the tagline we've got now is blending the passions because there's a lot of crossovers, I think, between wine production and, and sport. You know, there's travel, there's events, um, there's charity. There's all sorts of these little crossover moments. Um, and yeah, it's been a it's been a wild ride. You know, it's a it's a small a small wine club, uh, a club membership um, with a really interesting network. And uh, yeah. Uh, so, so, so you mentioned there right at the right at the beginning, you were in retail. Correct. Now, a lot of people out there, I know for sure myself, I don't really understand what that means. So, you were in retail with wine. What did that mean? Well, it was more on the floor. You know, I was lugging around wine boxes, uh, and it's sort of my first introduction to wine, um, and entirely customer service standing up all day for a wine company or yeah, a for, retailer or? For, for for a wine company i could should i mention them i don't know for majestic wine okay for and, and I, was, I had a great time there um i've definitely put on the pounds since i've stopped working there because i mean literally these guys you, you, you're walking lugging boxes all day you don't think about how much energy you kind of expend when you're on the job um but fascinating you know you build up amazing client relationships and people who come back to the shops because of individuals that work there um, not necessarily me, but a lot of my colleagues, you know, uh, great wine education and introduction to all the different styles of wines in the world. Um, and, you know, a, a good precedent for this, really, for me. And, and so that was the grounding of understanding wine, understanding flavours and yeah, countries. correct. And, That's and, how you got into it. And very much, I think more importantly, the stories behind wines. Because okay. it's very hard if, if, if you're selling a wine to someone... If you go, oh, it tastes like blackberries and cherries, and <laughs> people just turn off, you know. Yeah. But if you say, for example, you know, this wine mm. is is made by Lionel Messi uh, and his foundation in Argentina, it, it strikes wow. a massive chord with people, you know. Oh. Um, yeah, Amazing. so I think that's that's the huge advantage this wine club has as well versus a lot of other a lot other retail outlets um, is that the connection from all the wines to uh, or the authentic connection to sport really sets it apart. Okay, yeah. and and your background in sport purely amateur myself, really to be fair. Okay. Um, and it's the, our founder Simon Halliday um, uh, recently <clears throat> finished his uh, tenure as uh, European chairman of uh, rugby. Wow. And uh, so obviously, he. The, the, I can tell you the story behind actually how it was founded the company because it all makes sense. Fantastic. Um, he met, I think it was back in 2015, around that time. Um, he's good friends with Skulk Berger Senior in South Africa, who, um, you know, we all know the junior, uh, his, his son, the rugby player, he's terrorised England for ages, you know, the sure. shaggy blonde hair, yeah. you know, he big terrorized. tough forward, you know, World yeah. Cup winner. Um, but Skulk Senior played rugby as well as an amateur back in the day and just as massive a guy and a really phenomenal winemaker in Wellington, um, just north of Cape Town. Anyway, Simon was there on a holiday and uh, basically tried this wine and brought a load back to England and the concept of a, a wine club was formed when he was selling it to his mates and, um, you know, the, the idea just then was, I think, um, that there are lots more sports sportsmen around the world that we can access that make wine and all that kind of stuff and uh, just grew from there, yeah. So Simon's background in terms of sport, he was played for England and um, played for Bath and Harlequins, and I think he was a uh, so very successful sportsman. Very successful sportsman, actually played in a World Cup final in 1990 wow. against the Australians. Um, he always comes out with a great fact that he's the only Welsh-born um, rugby player to have played in a World Cup final, <laughs> even though he played for England, <laughs> wow. which is quite class. Um, but obviously, it's meant that we've got. A really good access to the kind of sporting world and you, you find that the cross-section of our members at the club most of them are in sport uh, in, in some level whether it's 
business or whether they're ex-players themselves or presidents of, of, of various um, sporting institutions, you know, that's, that's who it strikes a chord with, I think, this club. I, uh, I was amazed when I saw just how simplistic but very powerful the branding is. Good. I was <laughs> as interested on the side of this. And what yeah. I'd like to do is just turn that around. If you can see the connection there with all the different sports... <laughs> And then obviously the wine. And, and for me, how simple such an idea to, to sort of incorporate that across the branding yeah. was amazing. And so can I ask Sporting Wine Club, so how long has it been going? How many staff? Yeah, well, it's literally founders, Simon and his wife, uh, and two of us working for the team. So I, really? I do the sales and memberships, um, help with operations and logistics and buying so there's seriously pricing four, four oh yeah, yeah yeah it's still very much in its kind of infancy and we've got a whole web of opportunity at the moment like where do you spend your time because um, I, th- I feel like my my main role and the direction we're going in is to build a, a really strong uh, club membership so you as a punter can sign up for 100 pounds a month uh, to our wine subscription and get a, he- a heap of benefits alongside that so you know the, the 100 pounds you pay each month is there's no fees it just goes towards wine um, and then on top of that, you can attend tasting events with cool, you know, sports personalities. Uh, it's probably the main reason why most people are into <laughs> yeah. the club. Forget the wine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, uh, let's have a party. Um, and uh, you can get discounts at our partner restaurants in London. And there's, there's a whole concierge side and travel benefits as well to the vineyards. So it's a, it's a vibrant kind of, you know, if you like travel, if you like tastings, you like sport, you know, it's, it's a great... Wine, okay. Wine subscription. I'll, so yeah, yeah, it, it got into it. <laughs> right. So that deeper dive. So so <laughs> there are four people. Yes. And so the viewers and, and the audience out there could connect with any one of those four. And because there's four. Yeah. If you could say their names and how they would connect, probably on LinkedIn, because I think all all business owners at the moment are really trying to focus. Of course. Yeah. So um, Simon Halliday, founder and CEO, uh, he's very active. I'm always surprised by how active he is. I mean, he takes, uh, cause we're such a small business. It's of very, yep. you know, you send an email to the club, you might actually get a response from him wow. uh, just on, you know, customer service issues or whatever. Sure. Um, his wife, Rachel has been fundamental to the website. And kind of building from literally... What is the name of that website? It's the sportingwineclub.com. Okay. Yeah. And um, or www.sportingwineclub.com. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And um, it's, I mean, you'd be surprised, you know, when you start a small business, like just being able to transact yes. is so important. And I know it seems like bread and butter these days, you know, that's base one, but... Um, she's been amazing. We've gone through lots of stages of changes in that respect. And, and do you know if she's on LinkedIn? Uh, yeah, she's, she's on LinkedIn as Rachel, Rachel Halliday. Okay. And um, myself, Titus English, I'm on LinkedIn. And as I say, I do the memberships and sales. And Natasha Brandt uh, has just joined us. I think she's on LinkedIn okay. uh, as our marketing and, and comms girl. And she's, you know, you know joined chaos and has taken it, <laughs> taken it, taken it there already, you know. Um, so that, that's the team. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. In terms of, you've got some pretty special things you've already mentioned one i'm yes. really interested to find out about the next one next yes. to that so can you explain what that is and- well the doddy wine the doddy five we uh, the concept was kind of born i think end of 2020 going into 2021 last year um that we could for the lions tour we could come up with a red wine a product that incorporated lots of different elements uh, of an english uh, of a lions and south african lions tour um, because Skulk Burger is the, you know, um, the original winemaker yes. that we have. So you've got that South African element there. Doddy was a member of the club. Uh, he's closely, closely connected to Simon. And um, uh, this idea was born of coming up with a, a wine called the Number 5, um, ah. which it sort of, you know, 5 is... So that's not an S, that's a 5. It is a 5, yeah. And it incorporates, you know, the Number 5 comes up a lot. It's Doddy's shirt number. Yes. Um, it's the number of grape varieties in the bottle oh, of wine. Okay. This is a kind of traditional Bordeaux-style blend. Okay. Um, of, I'll get this right first time, Cabernet Sauvignon. Fantastic. Cabernet Franc, Merlot, um, Petit Verdot, which they use in very small quantities in wine to just give it a big kick, and Morvedra. Um and uh, five pounds 
per bottle goes to the charity, the chosen charity, uh, for every, every a sale of every bottle, which is My Name is Doddy Foundation. So, you know, and, and the, the final piece of the whole puzzle is that uh, a chap called Henry Fraser. Can you just turn that together? Yes, sorry. I'm just looking at it myself. <laughs> it's just so pointless. Um, but a chap called Henry Fraser, tragically, he... Um, he lost all, all his motor function from the neck down when he had a he had a bad accident. He was dove into the sea when he was a, a teenager, and yeah, lost all his movement. But an incredible mouth painter these days, and he some of his illustrations he does, uh, you know, w- lots of wildlife, and you can check him out online. Henry Fraser Art. It's it's really amazing. We had the privilege of him doing the front label for us, the uh, the cross, um, which was just you know the cherry on cherry on the cake really. You know, so all these different elements. You got skulk. You got Doddy, you got Henry Fraser. Um, the the emotion wrapped up into one product was uh, enough, you know. I mean, as a wine drinker myself, one of the things that really appeals to me mm. is I could go to the supermarkets and buy wines, but having the ability to look at something like this, where he, that wine has come out and five pounds is going to go to that charity, yeah. It's got to taste nicer, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah, I mean, the added benefit is it's got it's, it's a great winemaker. What a great um, cause! Yeah, and what a great cause. I mean, could you explain a little bit more? Could you go d- deeper dive on on sort of Doddy and, and a little bit about what's what happened to him? Because I know that there'll be people in the audience that won't know the backstory to that. Yeah, for sure. And I know it's quite moving. Yeah, it really is. I mean, Doddy was diagnosed with motor neuron disease. Uh, unfortunately, I don't actually know the exact date, but it must have been three or four years ago. And, uh, you know, he was given, uh, as is always the case with this, less than a year to live. And he's still going. Um, wow. It's just remarkable, really, to be honest, because it's such a de- degenerative, degenerative disease. You know, um, the fact that he's still struggling. And he has been, you know, instrumental in raising awareness and funds, critical funds for, to get for motor neuron disease. Um, uh, and, yeah, I mean, like... This year, for example, the government have, have said they put fifty million pounds towards, uh, particularly motor neuron disease. Um, Do you think that just, wouldn't have happened without? No way, without without really? Doddy and Rob Burrow and Phil Darby and a few others. Like, uh, there's no no chance the the awareness would have come. Um, so yeah, I think uh, uh, he's just an amazing man and hilarious as well. I really? mean, I've, 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 he's been a wine club member of ours, so I've had a couple of moments where I've spoken to him on the phone. And he's just such a funny guy. You know, he's still quick-witted as well. Which you just, you know, I remember really. seeing him on a rugby um, Six Nations game. Um, he got interviewed, yeah. and I think it was Princess Anne uh, was there, and she was talking to him. And I just remember that the camera person yeah. just was moving, yeah. and Princess Anne was in <laughs> hysterics. <laughs> and this from, a, this from a guy who's got motor neuron disease and... It's pretty bad, right? Yeah. It, he's, you know, if you if you looked at him from afar and you didn't know, mm-hmm. you'd say he was seriously ill. And obviously, motor neuron is a shocking, shocking disease. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but fair play yeah. to this amazing guy. It's incredible. And at the start of this project as well, I think it was him. It might have been somebody else, but I'm pretty sure. I don't want to misquote Doddy, but he, he was like, you know, they sold an abundance of dog collars to raise money for the charity. And I remember him saying, just like, I think a red wine will do, <laughs> you know, like, I, I think people will go in for it. <laughs> which is, which um, is so inspirational in terms of understanding that we do like a tipple and it, it is a nice thing to be sure. able to do by, you know, the enjoyment, mm. knowing that some of that is yeah. going back. And being the, I mean, I don't know if this is irrelevant, but being the British business podcast, I think it's quite interesting to tell the story of actually how the wine got to our shores. Because, um, you know, this happened in the midst of a massive crisis in South Africa where they put a complete embargo on wine production and on anything alcohol-related, really, at the, the critical point when we were trying to put this together. Um, how, how long ago was that? This is in the middle of 2020, really. It was just part... It was uh, just because of coronavirus. They wouldn't let anyone work on, on the vineyards. They wouldn't let bottling of, diff- of, of new, fresh juice um, happen. And... Um, there wow. was a there was a critical shortage. It's so it's so dull, but it's important. Of like bottle caps and you know corks and is is that well known? It was at the time. You know, last year was uh, particularly for South Africa as well. Uh, the whole of the wine industry suffered like a lot of industries, but 
I'm a, I'm a moderate wine drinker. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, uh, perhaps, you know, we just depleted all the stocks we had in the UK, but nothing was coming over to the point where, you know, we eventually got some of the bottles made and we were flying some over actually to do, do some, some creative marketing and get, get the, uh, the story out there. And the van that was carrying the samples to be flown over rather than freighted um, got stopped by the police in South, in South Africa. And we were like, God damn, what are we going to have to do to get something across here? You know, like, uh, so frustrating. And at the same time, it was a pre-sale item. And because of the, the impact of this wine, we'd sold, I think it was about 700 cases of six already to about 500 individuals. So we had people waiting here in the UK for something that wasn't even bottled. And we were just like, oh my God, the time is, the, the clock's ticking to the Lions tour now. And it was, it was going back a month back a month <laughs> we were like oh, Christ what are we going to do if it doesn't come in time um, and uh, yeah you know so I always find the mechanics behind the it's very interesting you know it's, uh, once it actually got here what's, what's gone into the making of this wine has been uh, a huge huge project for everyone involved um, mo- mo- most of our owner uh, sorry mo- most of our audience are, are business owners and business controllers mm-hmm. um, I would probably argue that there are an awful lot of percentage of those people out there yes who are dry wine drinkers wine connoisseurs people who are very interested i think they'd be interested to know about the way in which the membership works specifically yeah in terms of how they get involved with that yeah you've you've already said about the way in which sort of the membership and the benefits that come. Yes. But in terms of the wine, what yeah. what do so so I'm a, a person that I want to join. Yes. How does that work? What's the process of that? It's literally you go onto our website. There's a, a link you're going to be able to press. We're currently, as any small business, we're changing exactly how the website looks. But we we used to. I think I'll give you this background because it makes sense and okay. goes into your question. But we used to have a tiered system because we thought it was quite good to offer different stages of. Of memberships, so you know different amounts per month that you could spend. Okay, um, but naturally, I, th- I think this is right. You know, we, we've encountered that y- you class your customers differently when you do that, rather than just you know having a one size fits all. Yes, um, and you find oh, what, what's the level of access for this person versus that person, or you know, which isn't a great model to have. So we've streamlined it. It's one hundred pounds a month, and for that we set we send you a quarterly case of wine, mixed case loads of different sports that's tied to the sporting calendar. I think that's the unique thing, is that it's not a random case that's going to turn up on your doorstep and, you know, it's not sort of what you might get from other suppliers and you're going, what's this? Oh, there's two extra bottles for free, whatever. It, it's, it's like Six Nations is on. We're going to tailor a Six Nations-themed case from Italian rugby winemaker, from our English vineyard, from, from France, from all the nations that are in the Six Nations and, and give you a kind of like uh, the background within inside the box so you can you can see the stories the sporting stories alongside you know that's the that's what you get um, from the wine subscription side and you know our wines it's worth saying they range from from 10 pounds all the way up to 100 pounds a bottle um, and it is a huge huge array of of different um, different sports and different qualities and does that um, mean okay so does that mean then one particular month, I might get one one hundred pound bottle of wine. You could, you could do, but you'd never receive it just like oh, off the cuff. You know, we'd ov- we'd obviously explain it, and it's worth saying. You know, those those very premium wines purely on allocations. So we don't sell them okay. to we don't sell them to people that come to our website who are random. That it has to be for the membership. Okay, I'll give you an example. Double Back Vineyard um, in the United States is owned by Drew Bledsoe, who's an ex uh, NFL player. Uh, used to play for the Patriots before Tom Brady became, uh, you know, the most famous man alive. Yeah. Um, sure. And unfortunately got injured, which paved the way for, for, for Brady to come in. But um, um, his wine is £100 a bottle. It's a lovely, lovely Cabernet Sauvignon. But we only get 25 cases allocated of each, each vintage. So we have to be quite selective about how we or who we put it in front of. Um, otherwise, we'll just run out. And there's, there's only 2,000 bottles produced, which they, oh. which they split across all their retailers in, in the world so uh yeah so that, that that's the sort of access you get to products in the membership you know uh, niche little things that you can only get if you, if you are a member of the club okay um, so, yeah so okay so i need to be an educated 
client customer yep. because what I need to do is I need to go on the site and I need to read all about. So I need to, Correct. first of all, I will probably be, and obviously I've shown the branding, I need to be somebody who's pretty much interested in sport. Yes. Sporting Wine Club, of course, says it all. Yep. I completely get that. Correct. But then me to go deeper into that. I'm going onto the website, I'm looking through those pages, and now I'm understanding how many bottles, what quality bottles, yes. all of those things are going to be explained to me before I sign up and click and go through and become a member of Sporting Wine. Correct. And I would add the huge advantage of us being such a small club at the moment is that we have a lot of time to service each each member. You know, um, it's not like you ring your hotline going, oh God, who am I getting through to? Which advisor is this? What's going on? You, yeah. you know it's me or you know it's Simon or Natasha. Um, it's very it's very simple really. Um, and you'll see it all laid out on the website as well. The key thing I think is what runs alongside your wine subscription because you know, if we pitch this against any other wine subscription that exists, most of them are purely just a wine subscription. You know, you just, you pay, you pay X, you get this every month or every quarter, and that's it. But the fact that we have these events running alongside for free that you get, you get to access, you get discounts at our partner restaurants, at a hotel chain now in London as well, you get preferential rates, and a kind of bespoke travel um, service that we're building in with Platinum Plus, these guys who are uh, fantastic they get you I don't know, it must be 30 percent off you know nominal rates once you roll that all in alongside your wine subscription it look, it starts to look really attractive and you know the theory is if, if, you, if you use all the stuff you'll probably make back your wine subscription in savings and then you've just got a really nice wine subscription that runs anyway um, so you just need a an empty rack at home and a willingness to just get involved in the kind of uh, the fun aspects of the club and uh, yeah that's that's in it in a nutshell Okay, <laughs> fascinating. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, you're obviously in a very, very unique position right now because mm -hmm. you're the person who's got a lot on his shoulders and the objectives for the business. Yes, in terms of getting those messages out. So we've had, we've just had the pandemic. Yeah. You've just told me about a terrible, terrible story about South Africa stopping the production, and that obviously hurt you guys yeah in terms of the pandemic what are your thoughts about us coming out of it did it help the business the pandemic because people started to drink at home more yeah well for a time and there was actually a kind of health you know issue we thought you know you look at it and you go god actually all these people drinking at home i think uh, it started off like that first month what am i going to do when i'm locked at, locked away Oh wait, I've got a wine subscription and all this credit with this company. I'll get loads of wine. Um, I think it quickly swung the other way, where it was like you know you can't host dinner parties. Yep. You can't have your friends around so often. You know, perhaps your wine drinking's got a bit out of control, and pe our members even started to curb a little bit. Um, we, uh, another part of your question, I think, we learned is it was valuable to learn like what matters. Yep. Um, where the money actually comes from and who wants to be involved. I think. We did a lot of um, trade uh, with um, kind of restaurants and and bars and and sports clubs, which is which is very valuable because you you know yeah. you get access to lots of different people. But the actual the margins on the selling price of the wine are a lot tighter. Yes. So you do a lot more volume for a lot less, and we realised actually you know what individual sales are so much more valuable to the club. Sure. Um, so you know, naturally, coming out of the pandemic, we've just put all that stuff back in. You know, <laughs> lesson learned. <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> but you know, um, it's interesting to see. You know, we we, we operated uh, on a uh, you know that principle, the eighty twenty yes, principle. Yes, uh, Yeah, the Pareto principle. It really was was that we we decided to pre sell some wines uh, in a big project, which made us a lot of money um, versus the annual turnover, and we decided to try our hands at on primeur with. Um, some of our Jackie Lorenzetti Bordeaux wines, which is where you, you know you pre-sell a, a vintage that hasn't quite been released yet. Okay. Uh, the benefit for customer is that they get a great price on some incredible wines, um, and these things meant a huge amount. Uh, these two projects meant a huge amount to us, alongside the Doddy the Doddy one. Without which we, you know, wouldn't have been able to survive, to be honest. Um, and it's it's very interesting, like how you think, uh, th how you sell. You know, do you get the product in? And then do you sell it or do you actually get the hype going before you've even got it, knowing it's coming and, and know that you've got orders 
um, before you even get the product in. And I think that's why the membership is so important to us mm. because we know that we've got this database of people who are going to be willing. Um, it's not just a sort of get it in, what are we going to do? <laughs> you know, you know, think more, more critically about where this stuff's going and, and why. Um, so in terms of strategy, forecast, mm-hmm. the future, how are, you, how are you coping with this? It looks like we're going to be out of the lockdown. Yeah. No masks, people going back to normal, and sports clubs especially having members back. Mm-hmm. I think um, I don't know if this goes to it. Managing your time is so important. Actually, coming out of this because the what we've literally just realised is you can't do everything straight away. Of course. And um, you know, managing those expectations of what events you've got coming up, and um, it's going to be. It's so nice to see everyone coming back in though that couldn't couldn't buy during the pandemic. You know, there's uh, individuals and sports clubs, um, and the fact, yeah, I mean, just the fact that events can start again is is critical for us um something that i i literally joined the club just before the pandemic hit had one event which is called sort of why i joined and it was just canned wow. you know it's like wow oh. yeah um, and not, nothing replaces the physical side you know that, that's you, tough virtual's okay especially with wine you can't really replicate what you get in the in the physical space and the banter that happens and the networking that happens when you're drinking sure. uh, you know physical tasting it's, it's critical uh, that's back I'm not sure I answered your question exactly no no it's, I mean. <laughs> it's, it's all fascinating that yeah. the audience out there will will know mm. that they have an interest for a number of reasons it might not be that they want to be a member of Sport and Wine Club yeah. but what they'll want to know is what is the impact of the pandemic had what is the future looking like mm-hmm. the forecast how a business with such a different business model this is not any um, sort of normal wine yeah, or club. well yeah or well established kind of yeah way of doing things I yeah, suppose. It, yeah. It, it's very very unique very niche yes and I certainly I'm sat here thinking you know that the fact that I could buy a bottle of wine and give back as I've said a couple of times I think is an amazing thing but but also yeah. this bigger picture because I'm constantly trying to look to business as a way of networking to find interesting people who I can add value to yeah and I think that this brand sits alongside those values yeah well uh, another another side that goes goes towards that that uh that way of thinking um we've got a corporate membership model that's not not concrete but you know it's it's very interesting you can set we've done a lot of um auction items where you can travel to vineyards uh for for individuals and for for corporates um which is a real i think it's a real great aspect you know you could go to skulkberger's vineyard and go and meet the man and talk about wines and go around his cricket pitch vineyard and um as a strategy that's huge for us i think you know you can imagine the corporate yes. dinner world space yep. where where an item's up and it's like here we go you can go to Skulk Burger, Burgers Vineyard, blah, 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 blah. That's, you know, we offer a lot of those out. Too many, probably. I reckon Skulk's getting a bit annoyed, actually. <laughs> <laughs> getting all these Brits coming over. Um, but, but, but let's say that he's done 20. Yes. And let's say he's got another 10 in him. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you're saying, no, no. look, guys, he's, you know, maybe there's one 10 more. Get them while they're still, still around. And that's what it is. It's yes. about that value, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Agreed. Um, and God, there's an experience. I don't know if I'm going off on a tangent, but there is an experience as well with Jackie Lorenzetti's. Uh, he, he, this guy is the owner of Racing 92 Rugby Club, okay. France, very successful French club. And uh, he has this tasting room at the stadium where people can go and enjoy his Chateau wines that we stock in the UK um, and go and watch a game in private hospitality. A wonderful experience. And this guy, you know, he he owns honestly some of the best chateaus in Bordeaux. He he had critically he almost uh, Jackie's again it's sort of going on a tangent, but he um he got coronavirus really badly in the pandemic and uh, he just got over it and saw this plot of land up for sale in Bordeaux called La Font Rocher, which is a huge piece of land. I mean if you if you look at the Bordeaux wine map, it's, it's it could be that big, and La Font Rocher is like this literally like that really uh, in one of the parts. 
and uh, yeah, he was just snap it up. You only live once. Let's get it. I just love the <laughs> the, the willingness to just make more wine and and buy more land. It's fantastic. And uh, yeah, the experience of travel is critical coming out of this pandemic. I think that's that's where. We, everyone just can't wait. We've had so many full starts, haven't we? Yeah. The travel industry, I'm sure you've spoken to people yeah. where they're just like, okay, okay, we can plan. And then, oh, no, again. Sure. Okay, sure. oh, God, here we go again. Yeah. I think now it, it's looking likely, isn't it? Yeah. This is it. And uh, all this can happen again. <laughs> Finally. Um, yeah. Well, I'd like to say thank you for coming in today and sharing it's been the a stories. And the branding, I think, is amazing. And to our viewers... I'd just like to say that another fantastic story, an amazing brand, and until next time, 